Welcome to another 3D comparison video. To answer that question, if AI powered 3D modeling is the future of 3D creation, I decided to create this case study with two rhinosaurs. So we see the photo on the left. This is for a rhino statue. We see the size of, of the image. So this is roughly around 4 megapixels. And also this is a JPEG file format. And for the photo on the right, we have a rhino calf. This image is a lot bigger in terms of resolution. As we can see over here, the resolution. And this is around 36 megapixels. And the file size and uh, file format is listed over here. And again, we have a JPEG for this. So I added those to to the common sense machine AI to 3D model platform. And we are gonna start with the one on the left. So this is for the adult rhino. We see that the model has been cropped, so it will no longer have shadows and stuff like that. If I'm gonna rotate it to the other side, we're gonna see that for this model, the texture and the lighting for the other side not visible to the camera is quite off. But if you're gonna look at the Rhino from this perspective, the texture will be, let's say, decent. I added the same photo once again, and this time I also enabled the experimental mode. As we can see, the texture will look like this, so it will be more towards an orange tint. But one problem with this output is that the ears of the rhino are only positioned on one side, but overall the texture and the lighting is matched on both sides, as we can see, so the left and the, the left and the right side. So this is for the first image, and for the second one this is the original version without the experimental. As we can see, the initial texture for this was quite higher. So the overall, this is still quite pixelated, but this is because the, the platform is still at the beginning. I'm sure that they will slowly increase the texture based on the input. But overall, we can see that the model is quite well detailed. So this is the face that was acquired from over here. As we can see, it has that eye. And over here, it tried to create a similar eye. In my opinion, this looks similar to maybe a more of a horse than a rhino. But over here, we see that rhino calf head was properly maintained. And I also added the experimental mode for this one. This time the texture has a greenish tint. And as we can see, again, within the experimental version, it doesn't manage to properly define symmetry within here. So currently we only have one on this side. But overall we see that the eyes of the rhino over here are better and also it doesn't have that horse-like look. So it maintained the, let's say, the similar aspects of the rhino calf. Okay, so within the next phase, I will have those open within Blender in order to transfer them towards Unreal Engine where the final scene will be, will be defined. So to do that, I will go over here, download mesh. We see that the file format will be JLB. Overall, the file size is quite small. So this is 2.7 megabytes. And if I'm gonna download the calf, so keep in mind that this had a large photo, so 36 megapixels. And if I will download this mesh, the calf will be quite similar size to to the rhino. 
right, the adult rhino. So within Blender, I will have those imported, import. I will select the GLB file format. And I know that this will be within download and we have this the first model. I'm not gonna scale them now because I'm gonna scale them directly within Unreal Engine. But I will go to UV editing and I will see that this is the unwrapped of the model. I will save this as a JPEG, set the quality to 100% and I will call this adult JPEG. Okay. I will save it directly on the desktop. So the mesh is quite, quite well defined for this one. And I will also save it now as an OBJ or I could go with an FBX to have that imported within uh, Unreal Engine. So I will select this file, export, OBJ in this case, call this adult and go to selection only. And I will have that exported. Okay. Now if I will go on my desktop to see that texture is currently on my second screen, but I will move it. Okay, so we see this is the texture. So we have that file. So as you can see, this is around four megapixels. So a little bit higher than the original aspect ratio of that photo. If I'm going to go to properties, I'm going to see that these are the image width, height and resolution. So I will do the same for the following one. So this is for the adult. I'm going to go file new and I will import the other model. So from downloads, it will be mesh two. We see the calf over here. I'm gonna enable the textures. I will leave it like this with that blue, blue tent. I'm gonna select the model and within the UV editing, I'm gonna save this image. So I'm gonna call this calf. And I will also have this exported as an OBJ. Maybe I will slightly adjust this within Photoshop to give it a more grayish tint, not this bluish one. So go to file, export, and I will have this exported as an OBJ. But again, I want it to be on the selected. So export OBJ, I will call this calf limit to selection only and have that exported and on my desktop I should have that calf model. So let me refresh this. We see the texture. I'm going to double click. This will be the texture. Okay. So within the next step, I will transfer this to Unreal Engine. I will also swap my, my PC since I don't have such a good um, specification on this main PC. I will go on my laptop. Okay, so let's proceed within the next section. To remove that blue tint from the Rhino calf, I will use Photoshop. So I will go to image adjustments and I will change the saturation for this one. So I slightly move the saturation to something less. So something like this should be okay. 
and I will just have that saved. Okay, so the next step will be with Unreal Engine. For the case study, I made use of Electric Dreams environment. This environment is available on, on the marketplace. And I also made use of a Rhino model. So we see over here the, the creator of this Rhino model. And it has multiple animations. I only made use of one idle animation. And this is that model. Okay, so let's see the final scene. A few moments later. Okay, so this is the scene from our engine. We see that rhino calf with half of horse face. So that left side is like that. We also see the adult created by AI with that bluish texture. And as you can see, also the rhino from that pack. Now, I set the scalability to low within the engine scalability, some of them to medium to have some better reflections. And this is the, the play level using those. Keep in mind that the graphic card is 2060 mobile version on a laptop. And that is not, let's say, having the proper amount of VRAM in order to play the Electric Dream scene, but still managed to look decent in my opinion. This I'm curious, what is your opinion regarding this? As you can see, it took a little bit of time to get that up and running with the play button, but it should start any, any second. I have recorded this separately and now I just added voice. Okay, so we see that texture streaming pool the pool is over. I went to the area where I positioned those two rhinos, as well as the one from the pack. And uh, as we can see, there are a total of four rhinos, so two of them are calves. I put them like that so we can better see both faces of those without having to rotate around. So the texture streaming pool is still uh, quite low, so we still receive that warning. This is the other side uh, texture by the CSM AI. As you can see, it has that bluish tint, but overall the model looks decent. So the next step would be to have this rigged, just like the, the other Rhino is having a, a head movement, so it doesn't look so, so static within the environment. Okay, I will also add another section where I will uh, set the engine scalability to, to epic and to see those difference, but keep in mind that that will maybe a little bit buggy. So I've set the scalability of the engine to epic, initially high, but afterwards to epic. As you can see, there are some drastic changes within the environment for the global illumination, the shadows, the reflection, the shading of the foliage and so on. Okay, from now on, I will speed up this video to show you exactly how that went. The FPS dropped quite a lot during this display. Okay, so play is active. Now I will speed it up. Okay, so before we draw some conclusions regarding how well defined are those models created by AI, I want to discuss this video. So this video was created by Nick two years ago, 
and he made use of Monster Mash, a free web tool. So how this platform worked was quite similar. You also had to add a reference image, but afterwards you will need to draw the specific outline. So in this case, he will draw out that rhino main body, afterwards the legs, and he would use inflate in order to add depth to that model. But the main advantage is that this model, as it looks over here, it mostly resembles a potato than a rhino. So afterwards for the ears, again, he will select an outline for that and again will inflate it in order to generate that. So CSM also struggled with um, with those years, as you recall, within the experimental models. And afterwards, he will take those models in Blender and he would fix those uh, legs. So they are quite far from the body. He will move them and also will address the texture of the Rhino. OK, so let me know in the comment section if you consider that AI powered 3D modeling will be the future of 3D creation. Also, if you enjoy this content, please let me know either a thumbs up or maybe a subscription. Also, if you have any other uh, questions, feel free to, to post them within the comment section. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.